Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak, coming to you today from Waikiki Beach. We have a, a good man on the show today, Pat King. He has a radio show in the Idaho area uh, called The Man Cave. And, you know, I have a man cave, too. I think every man should have a man cave. We're going to talk a little bit about that and talk story with him about uh, his exciting life. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I need to tell everybody um, about our new book that just came out. It's called uh, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Uh, it's been in the top 10 in Christian men's books. That's Catholic and Protestant books. It's so cool because we love our Protestant brothers and sisters. And, uh, and I'm just going to give you a couple of the chapter titles. It's just kind of, it's just kind of a unique. Um, the titles will kind of tell you everything. Uh, it's got its cowboy theme too, of course. Where have all the cowboys gone? All my heroes were cowboys. Know your creed. Live by your code. Ride for the brand. Be a man of your word. Be dangerous. Make a stand. Bridle your passions. Don't be a drifter. Ride the proving trail. How a man treats a woman defines him. And uh, build brotherhood. So those are just some of the ti chapter titles. But a lot of uh, men and women are actually reading it together, husbands and wives. And... Uh, men are reading it, and also it's so cool because fathers are reading it with their sons. And um, and I have one father and son who's rereading it for the second time now. And uh, it's great to use in your men's group. So check out 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Probably a man similar. Probably uh, could have based it on the man who's, who I'm going to be interviewing today, Pat King. I just want to let you guys know, Cindy and I have been out sailing in the Virgin Islands. for We, we were sailing for a couple of months out there on our boat. The, the Spirit of Adventure. And uh, we had about 12 days of real heavy wind. Uh, so we had to go into a hurricane hole, and we, we threw out our anchor. And uh, I tell you, when you're getting buffeted by 35-knot winds, uh, you hope that anchor holds. And uh, I've, I've been looking at the Facebook uh, uh, for the Virgin Islands lately, uh, the sailors out there, and there's been two or three incidents of the, of the, of the boat drifting because what they did is they tied on to a mooring ball but they didn't dive down and go deep and check to see if the mooring ball was strong uh, as opposed to using their own anchor. And uh, lesson learned, because nothing like seeing a beautiful boat drifting out in the middle of the ocean or worse yet, drifting out and, and, and breaking up in the rocks, which we saw one do in, uh, you know, on, the, on that community site. So what do you think, how does that apply to our own lives? We need to throw out the anchor. We need to, you need to, there's a certain way you dr drop an anchor. You go into an area that has sand, and you, you drop the anchor, and as for as, for as deep as it is, you have to do four to five times that much more of chain. And then you let that down for, you let that anchor hit the sand, and then you begin to drop more chain as you back up the boat. And then when you've dropped, you think you've dropped enough chain, because the chain helps you anchor too. Then you put it in reverse, and you pull hard on that anchor, and you make sure it's there. Well, do you feel that you have that kind of faith? that you're not going to be set adrift, that you're not going to be throwing up on the rocks or, or you're not going to be drifting out to sea? Is your anchor in church? Are you in the boat of Peter? Are you in the bark of Peter, as the church is called? Um, do you dive down and check to see that, you're, uh, that your anchor is holding? Uh, so just a lesson to think about from our sailing experiences to get go deep with God, uh, throw out that anchor, find the hurricane hole, find a safe harbor. And then, uh, and then you know, I have, a, I have an app that I check my anchor uh, Periodically, I can see what's happening with my anchor, and if, it, if and the boat starts to drip it, drift, it warns me. And so we need to always be on the alert in our faith and uh, always be di uh, diligent. So Pat King's in the house today with us. He has a radio show. The name of your radio show is The Man Cave, isn't it, Pat? It, it is. It's called Yeah, Man Cave. Man uh, Cave. Man Cave. And and it, uh, you know, two guys sitting on a couple boulders in the middle of a cave. You know, just 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 talking away. So talking about men's experiences and what we're going through, what what we don't do, mm. what uh, should be done. Yeah, you're a with my good... A lot of it is what you don't, what we don't do. 
Mm. I don't think we do enough as men, to be honest with you. And you're with my good friend David Fortin, who, uh, man, if you talk about somebody who, who uh, has his hands full, he's, he's diligent, he has um, a lot of responsibilities in his life, but he gets the job done. You know, he's, he's, he, doesn't, he, does. he doesn't leave things out like you were saying. So it's called Man Cave, and it's on, it's on the, the EWTN station in Boise. It, yeah, it's Salt Light Radio Boise. Uh, it's got AM, FM, AM and FM radio stations, uh, 102.3 and, and uh, uh, 1140 AM. And it, it all started when, uh, when I got back. I returned to the faith after a 28-year absence. Well, let's, I, let, let's, go, let's go back. Let's go back. Yeah. So you were, you were raised in, in Idaho? I was raised in Idaho, uh, Catholic. Very, Idaho's a very conservative cowboy land country. Yes. My uncles were dairymen. My, my, I had uncles that were uh, landscapers, orchard men, nursery men. All worked the land, some sort of Hard sense. Hardworking usually independent self-employed type people mm. and worked all the time and i spent my childhood hanging around those guys now they did a lot of fun things to me like when i was 12 they told me to drive out to the feed the cows right but they told me to go a certain way they had me cross all the corrugates so when you're 12 trying to push on the gas and you're going over the corrugates you're you're kind of bouncing around in the truck okay so and what what is the corrugate is that what keeps the cattle from going from no, corrugate is how they irrigate their fields, and and back then in the in the in the seventies, uh, they had they would flood irrigate or water through hand oh. lines or uh, oh, yeah. you know siphon tubes, and yeah. a corrugate is just a row where the water would travel to irrigate. But oh. they're deep, they're deep crevices, and when they tell you to drive over that way and you're going over them, it's con it's like going over speed bumps one right after another. And, and trying to get somewhere, and you just bounce all over the place. Oh, that's so funny. And, and, and when I got back, they just laughed at me. They thought that was that was a hoot. <laughs> well, you I'm driving I, a truck at 12 years of age. Yeah, that's what you do on the farm, right? On the, down on do. the ranch in there. And I love Boise, Idaho. I went out there and spoke with the people at Salt and Light and uh, did their one of their galas. And I remember we. I said, why don't we get a few guys together? We'll go right, right. We'll do a motorcycle run for a couple of hours. And I'm pretty exhausted when I fly in all the way from Hawaii. They said, okay, we'll see. If we get a few guys. Seventy guys showed up, and we rode up that beautiful Payette Canyon, if that's how you say it. And uh, Payette. Payette, Payette, Payette Canyon, and uh, Payette, Payette, and and uh, and then we had a cigar night, and they sold out the cigar place, and it was the first. I think the cigar place had just opened, so there's a lot of good men in Boise, Idaho. But I remember I was sitting at a table signing books, and I, I, this one gentleman came up, kind of slender, older gentleman with a belt on, the cowboy boots on. I looked up, and I go, are you a cowboy? And he goes, well, I've worked on ranches all my wife, all my life. And his wife goes, he's a cowboy. And then the next day, I see them. They're driving the support truck behind all the motorcycles. And we set stop at one of those beautiful river, the creek. And I asked him, are, 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 are today's men anything like cowboys and, he, and his wife stepped in she said they're not anything like cowboys you know we've lost so many of the younger men have lost that sense of of that cowboy ethic you know that rugged um that rugged uh dignity and that virtue you know so so you learn a lot about uh manning up and having responsibility when you when you raised on a farm well one of the key things i learned as a, as a kid was when someone asked you to do something you didn't even think about it you didn't give them lip you didn't oh i don't want to do that you know you just said okay and you went out and did it it was because you know you were part of the family mm. and you were part of what made that family tick run it had to be successful you know it had to pay the bills and if you didn't do your weight then it didn't get done or someone else that, had to do it yeah yeah or, yeah well then you got to find that someone else yeah and when you're out in the country there aren't a lot of places where you're you know I, I personally right now live out in the country where I where my closest neighbors is a five thousand head dairy, mm -hmm. uh, and, and they don't do much to help me. <laughs> yeah, so, so so they're they're busy, but you busy. But, but you but that it's true that there's that there is a dignity in work that uh, we're missing out on. So many of the younger generation, I, I know so many men who own businesses. They're saying it's hard for us to get anybody to work, and if they do, they act like they're doing us a favor. They don't want to work full time, or they don't show up to work on time. But Jesus said that even now, the Father and I, we work. There's a real dignity in any kind of uh, productive work, I should say, and and uh, and it it harms a person's soul when they're not working.
when they're not being oh, productive. Yeah. yeah, I agree 100%. It, but I look back on my childhood, and and it, it for, gave me the fortitude to do just about any. When someone said, can you do this? I, I didn't have the skill set, but you know what? I, I always said, yeah, I'll give it my best shot. Yeah. I'll do it. I'll step up. That's you how you learn. to do stuff. Yeah. And, and you know, and, and the, the term self-made gets used a lot, but... You know, you really aren't self-made. God, God trained you, gave you all the gifts and tools, and and you hope you have the courage to just go ahead and try. And if you fail, okay, you learned how mm-hmm. not to do it the next time. Yeah, that's right. You that, don't really actually. You don't really learn until you fail. I mean, when right. when I coach people in martial arts or I coach people in surfing or whatever, I'll tell them how to do it, and if they do what I say, they still don't understand until they no. till they fail. And they go, okay, now I understand. We're talking with Pat King. His radio show in the Boise area is Man Cave on Salt and Light Radio. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Schoolofmanliness.com is a place for men of grit and grace to join together, to inspire, to encourage, and to challenge each other to grow in manly virtue. Members receive morning man meditations, a monthly curriculum that is rich with audio, video, and written content, and a trail guide to help you map out your new trajectory. Many of our members lead their sons through this same curriculum. Your membership gives you access to both the Man Cave, which is our non-Facebook type community, and the School of Manliness at schoolofmanliness.com. Become a member at schoolofmanliness.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on Amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned now. Here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We love our EWTN uh, family and uh, our TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, our motorcycle TV show, is airing on EWTN now. I think it's 33 episodes. Uh, We have four different seasons. The last 11 episodes were filmed here in Hawaii. So you can enjoy that on EWTN or Prime Video, or you can go to uh, YouTube, the Bear Wozniak uh, Spirit of Adventure YouTube channel, and we've got over 1,500 videos up there. We've got um, uh, all of the Long Ride Home series, all of these video versions of our radio show, so you can see what our guests look like. And uh, and now we just we just uh, we just activated people being able to access Long Ride Home on our YouTube channel last week. So go to Bear Wozniak YouTube channel, uh, subscribe and uh, like it and share. We we have we have about fifty of these little six, sixty second shorts that are excerpts from my new book, Twelve Rules for Manliness. Really cool video work uh, animation, and so that's a great way for you to evangelize by sending that, that those little shorts out on YouTube. They're all YouTube. They're all on YouTube. So you can share them. So we got our guest today, Pat King. Um, hey, Pat. So he's from Boise, Idaho. He has a he lives on a, ran- a working ranch, and he's uh, I have a small farm. I- Five acres. Five I have a acres. couple cows and some pigs, and you know. It's a gentleman's uh, farm. It, it's a gentleman's. Well, I had eighty, but you know, economic times, you know, all that. 
Uh, mm-hmm. I won't go into all the details. No, but I mean, it's it, rugged with, with when you ha- when you work have a ranch or a farm. You're, yeah. I mean, that takes faith to do that. But I yeah. want to ask you about when you were younger. We want to talk, talk to you more about your faith. But you love baseball. You, you, were, you had hopes to be a, 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 a major league baseball player. Yeah. What's, what, posi- my, what, what did you like to play? I, well, I was a third baseman. That was my primary position, and I was also mm. a pitcher. Mm. I was a good hitter. Hitter usually was in that fourth, third, fourth, fifth area of the batting lineup. Yeah. Uh, pretty, pretty consistent with doubles, triples, good hard hitting. Um, my coach used to, you know, poke fun at me saying, you'd have in the park home runs if you could run fast enough. You yeah. Know? So, but, but I, but I love the sport. It was a, the one thing that I, I seemed to be naturally gifted and talented at that, that, but also had that fire in the belly to, to want to really be good at it. And mm-hmm. so I practiced and, and, uh, you know, I wasn't relying on God a lot during that time. I mean, I went to church every Sunday and, and all that stuff and went to back when they called it CCD and it was on Wednesday nights and it was all structured. I went all to that because it was in obedience to my mom as well. So I didn't really own the faith at that time. Uh, but I grew up in a very German Italian Catholic family that was devout and a lot of family members in the, in the magic Valley where I grew up in, in Southern Idaho. Um, and so there was a lot of, it was like if you didn't go to church, you just you heard of everybody heard about it, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it is, but the one thing that always drew me too was how how friendly and honest the priests were. We'd we'd have a family reunion, a priest would be invited, and they'd be sitting in a chair drinking beer, mm-hmm. and it's like, wow, that that's so cool, you know. So he's like, approachable, right? He's approachable. Well, and you know, we'd the, sit and talk. But that, but that, um. That time when you're young and you're going to mass and you really don't get it, and you're going to CCD and you really don't get it, but that whole time, it's still it's like seeds being planted that take the yeah. right type of water and 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 that and the realities of life. It's like when I go out golfing, you know, I'm out there with my son Jeremiah and he and I, he, he and I were surfer buddies, and we go out and golf. And we go, how do these young people get so good? Well, because they hung around their dad and maybe their mom, and they would go golf with them when they were little, or they or they know how to sail. Um, and so it, these seeds that are be planted, even if they don't seem to be taking root, they're there. So, uh, well, so then a, t- mm-hmm. a good point, good point. I, uh, when I was younger, I, I went to all, got confirmation, went through CCD, graduated 12th grade, all that. Then I was asked to teach CCD. Now, I don't know why, but I was with six other adults and, and the kids were asking me, would, would ask a question. Well, I really don't get much out of it. Why do I need to go? And, I don't know where this came from. Again, it's always been the Holy Spirit that, is, mm-hmm. that has always encouraged those thoughts of wisdom. But I, I said, you know, are you really putting anything into it? I couldn't believe I said that. Mm-hmm. But you don't go to Mass to, to get something out of it. You go to Mass to contribute. That's to the Catholic way. It. That's right. It's that about worship. Yeah. It's not about being entertained. No. Yeah. And these kids nowadays, they leave the faith to go get entertained. Uh, see yeah. a rock star, rock performance, or, yeah. and then some preaching. <laughs> right. And even that is, has to be entertaining. You know, right. I mean, you can have the worst uh, preacher in the world and the worst music, but you're, worship, you're there to worship Jesus and to receive him in body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. You know, I was thinking about you when I first met you. I was thinking, this guy is a St. Peter type guy. You know, spontaneous, uh, full of life, <laughs> full of energy, you know, uh, which with that kind of spontaneity, you kind of, it ends up sometimes you hit and you run into walls, don't you? You like you yeah. have this you have this go for it attitude. And but what 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 happened in your faith? How did it? How did you eventually come back to your faith? Well, I went. I moved to Southern California for a winter. Winters up here can be hard when you're just an employee trying to make ends meet. And if you have a very harsh winter, and the jobs you do don't or lay you off for the season because it's it's too cause a landscaper and a sprinkler guy, and you just don't work in the winter times here. And, and I got tired of struggling. My dad invited me down to Palm Springs, California, where he lived and for the winter. And I thought, okay, I'll come down and work and come back. Well, then some things happened that, that kept that from happening. I ended up staying there for 11, ended up being 11 years. But I in, was pa- in Palm this, Springs. In Palm in Springs. In Palm Springs. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of golf courses that need to be landscaped and taken care of and all those. Yeah. 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 Well, that's where I started my business, my landscaping business. But... I, I was going to a, the 
churches, the Catholic churches down there were on the very liberal priest side. This is mm. early Vatican II, early 80s, mm -hmm. and Vatican II was kind of dividing the church between conservative and liberal mm -hmm. and, the, and, the, and the outlook on things. And, and I was going to a Newman Center church because I was young, mm -hmm. and this, this priest allowed all sorts of heresies to take place in the church and comments and yelling at the bishop for not letting women be priests and deacons and stuff. And, and I could never agree with that. And so I, I was dating a girl at the time and I wanted her, I wanted to marry a Catholic. And so we brought her to him. And after two and a half, two and a half hours of listening to him talk about the, his side of the church, I was so confused as that I thought that doesn't sound like the Catholic church I grew up in. And my then girlfriend, soon wife, we left. I didn't come back. I stopped going to the mass because I thought the church was changing drastically that any other Christian church would be the same. It's like a boat that's um, that's lot that where the anchor is they're adrift. They're adrift. Yeah. And and come to find out later he was dating a girl and all that while he was being a priest and I just thought, well this is how things were gonna go. And it was sad because it was during the start of Saint John Paul II uh, mm -hmm. as a Pope and I thought I missed out on some really good stuff, uh, but anyway, that I, I left. I became a non-denomination. Went to a four-square church that was very conservative, but my both my political and my religious values, and uh, and that's where it stayed for quite a while. And yet, I found myself every Christmas Eve sneaking off to midnight mass. Mm. So I I wasn't a very good non-Catholic Catholic. You know, I I still kind of liked to seek that out because I still knew. In the heart of heart, that the Eucharist in the Catholic but, Church. But you, but you, but you found, but you found a lot of beautiful Christians in. Oh, you know. absolutely. But but it's it's kind of like, um, you know, I did the same thing. I, I left the church for a season, and wonderful people, beautiful people who love Jesus. But this is maybe not fair to say for everyone, but for me, it was like I had that song. Is that all there is? I, like I wanted. I thought there must be something more. I felt like I was swimming in the shallow end of the pool. And then my yeah. dad, my dad had stayed in the faith, and he became a Catholic deacon. He sent me Stephen Ray's book, Crossing the Tiber, and he got me praying the Liturgy of the Hour. And I was like, "Oh my gosh, look what I've missed out on!" And I look out, I'm looking out at the ocean right now from where I'm sitting. That's what it felt like. That instead of that that little bathtub, that little shallow end of the swimming pool experience, there was a the breadth and the depth of an ocean of knowledge and wisdom and uh, spirituality. Why trade that in, though, like for a bowl of porridge, like that priest was at, yeah. telling you to do, like what Esau traded his birthright for a po bowl, you know, bowl of porridge, bad porridge. Right. I, it, 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 was, it was a very confusing, hard time for me, and I didn't go back and check out why uh, the church, if it had changed, if it really was what he was or anything like that. I just, well, then when you get married and you stay in one church, it just kind of snowballs. You just kind of stay there. But you're right. One of the things I learned about being in, in those non-denominational Christian churches was the ability to, to worship, to, to praise Jesus openly and say, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, and I love you, Jesus, and all that. And that, and that I was a man. I was a man's man. I grew up in, in farming communities and all that. And it's like, you know, I, 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 I don't need to say Jesus to be, you know, presenting Jesus, to be that kind of guy that exudes Jesus. Or you were told not to talk politics or religion. You were told to suppress things like that, and I think that was a very destructive era in our in our culture to suppress the ability to express one's faith openly mm -hmm. as as men. Now, women were allowed to do it, but men were told to stop it and and mm -hmm. be a man and 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 just be strong and don't cry and don't do any of that stuff. And it's like, you know what? I cried the first time I received communion after 28 years. But well, we got we got to take I, a break. I want to hear about. I want to go deeper with that. We're talking with Pat King. He has a radio show uh, in Salt and Light Radio in Boise called Man Cave with David Fortin, and uh, other things that he does. He's had he's had TV shows made about him. He's um, throughout. He's a part German, part Italian. He spent a lot of time in, in Italy working on a new book that he's got going. Uh, so when we're back, we'll explore that a little bit more of that with Pat King. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Announcing Spirit Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. So many people, especially you mama bears, tell us we want more of Bear and Cindy together. 
Well, we're happy to announce our website, spiritofadventuretv.com, as well as our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure, where you can watch Spirit of Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. Join us where we live in the Hawaiian Islands or where we sail our boat, the Spirit of Adventure, in the Caribbean. Experience both adventure and serenity with us as we share our life together, as well as the joy and the wisdom of our faith. Go to spiritofadventuretv.com to find out more and subscribe on YouTube to Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure. And join us, Spirit of Adventure, with Bear and Cindy. Go to schoolofmanliness.com and subscribe to our weekly email to receive video YouTube links of the Bear Wozniak radio show, as well as the Spirit of Adventure with Bear and Cindy TV show, which, by the way, is filmed in the tropics, as well as our manly evangelistic YouTube shorts. Go to schoolofmanliness.com. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want you to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and there you will find that you can subscribe to our email. It's a good email. You know, you get it once a week in the morning on Saturdays, and it has, um, it has that week's uh, radio show in the video version, YouTube version there. It has uh, links to our incredible... If you've ever been to our web store, you've missed out. We got so many great things, including, the, you know, my, my three books and... Uh, and it also has, uh, uh, you know, um, these 60-second shorts that we're doing. We do a, we post one there, and you can share it with your friends. So these little YouTube shorts that get so much attention now. So so much going on in that newsletter, and we'd love for you to be part of the uh, the adventure. So uh, go to deepadventure.com and subscribe, and uh, you can find out more about our ministry. You can join the Man Cave and and uh, the School of Manliness there too. Our guest today is uh, Pat King. His show is called Man Cave. We should get you and some of the guys to join my man cave, man. But I know you guys got it going on there. So now, so so now you've been adrift, like we talked about at the beginning of the show. Um, my, I, I, you know, it's a not a not, it's a very eerie thing to see a boat adrift in the water, where the anchor is broken loose, and that is really kind of what happened to you. And uh, yeah, how did I, how is it that you came back to the church? Well, I, I I I tell people all the time that when I decided to leave the Catholic Church. Because I wanted to marry a woman more than, you know, work on my faith as a Catholic, find the right priest or the right situation. I, I tell people I gave up my man card as a Catholic because I gave up what I principally believed in thoroughly in the Catholic faith. I thought the preaching was going astray. So I say I left my man card, lost my, gave up my man card. Wow. Lost it That's because, heavy. And then I didn't feel worthy to be leader of my own family's spiritual direction. Mm. So I I know that when men are in that battle between the love for a woman and their faith, you kind of choose your faith and help mm -hmm. bring that woman along because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you actually you actually tell your wife you're not based on principles. And so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I struggled with that for a lot of our marriage and and as it got on in our marriage, we had a handicapped child with special needs and and he ended up passing away. And at tw at the age of twelve, and part of that's what the reason for the book is is to talk about that journey with him, mm. and how he, God gave me this great gift of my child. But I uh, I I kept thinking I'd I'd go to these sermons and they talk about Jesus in the Eucharist, but it was just symbolic, and they talk about they spent more time on tithing, and I just my head was just going. There's something missing. There's something I need more. There's something lacking. But I never left the church, their church because I had a family. And I didn't want to cause... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I was conflicted with that desire. So finally, after years of financial tro troubles with, with the economy and stuff like that, and I lost a, a $2 million property, um, mm. uh, and my wife decided that she had had enough and left me at the same time, I, I I was even more adrift. I wasn't even going to church at that point, but I I knew I never gave up believing in God. But I asked God one day. I went to this local sermon 
on the Easter because I know it's Easter. I got to go to service, right? So you went to, to uh, the, the non-denominational service. I went to another, yeah, yeah, but not organ. not the Catholic Church. Okay, no, not the Catholic Church. I just went to someone that was not far from my house. I said I just got to go to service. It's it's Easter. I got to go. It was so irreverent. Everybody's sitting around in Hawaiian shirts. I kid you not. Well, we do. And, that's what we do here. I, I know, our, but this our, is Idaho. Our, I, I know, it's funny. But our priest uh, goes barefoot, right, because of the nature of his the order he's in, you know, or he's yeah. wearing sandals. But well, yeah, that okay. would not be out of position out in Hawaii, yeah, but in Idaho, yeah. it's, and it's, it's early spring, it's cold, and everyone's wearing Hawaiian well, shirts don't tell and me Well, don't tell me the guys had man buns, too. Uh, a few of them <laughs> did, yes. But the kids were running around, or... It, no no reverence to the Easter service. And mm -hmm. and I was there, and I sat in there, and I sat through the whole thing. And as I'm leaving, I someone said, uh, hey, I hope to see you again. And I wanted to say, no, you won't. But mm -hmm. I did, and I held that in. I walked out to the parking lot, and I said, God, I know you, you want me to come back. I need you. Where do you want me to go? I, I yes. wasn't even thinking returning. Yes. So where do you want me to go now? got to understand, God doesn't speak in his own voice most of the times. He just inspires you with someone you're familiar with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And my, I hear my grandmother's voice saying, I said a rosary for you today. So mm -hmm. during the time I was raising my handicapped son and not in the church, she would call up from time to time to wish us well and say, I said a rosary for you today. As a, as when she was alive, she's now been passed many, many years. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I hear in my head, her voice saying, I said a rosary for you today. Mm. So boom, click. I should go back to the Catholic Church and give them another try, you know, see if they've changed, you know. So I took me a couple more, uh, well, actually a couple months. I went back in early July. What year What year was this? 2014. 2014, okay. And I went and I said, if anyone stops me and says, I, know, I don't know who you are, you can't go up to service, you can't receive, you, you, and I would have walked away and left but i went through the whole mass and the whole mass was like i'm all familiar with this hasn't changed it's exactly <laughs> the way it was when i left it mm -hmm. who would who knew right mm -hmm. and so it been 28 years and i went up to receive communion now i know what saint paul says about it but i was worthy and willing to accept jesus because i knew i truly believed what was on that altar was Jesus Christ. Well, we have to be careful here because I, I think I think I think there's a there's a in the church we have a certain protocol when you when you've turned your back on the church like that to go to the priest and go to confession first but but uh you not, you you being innocent well, and just wanting Jesus tell us what happened. I wanted Jesus so badly. That's the reason why I I left I had those doubts in the first place mm -hmm. in the non denom was that they weren't worshiping Jesus fully. Yes. So I go up and receive communion and as I make my way back to the pew I I my my face starts getting warm tears start welling up in my face really i start feeling oh yeah mm. oh yeah and i and i hit my knees on that kneeler and i said thank you jesus i was so i knew i had just received the body and blood of jesus Christ. yes yes and it was it was i have never missed mass since except for I, that covid period where we couldn't go in but but i, I remember so i know so many men uh it, it's either the sacrament of confession or the sac or the or receiving the Eucharist that some suddenly the Lord just infused his consolation his love into them and they knew that they knew that they knew that this is where they belonged well that that brings up the other part a couple months later father in his world in his wisdom said I see a lot of new faces he's up there before he does the consecration he goes I see a lot of new faces and if you haven't been to confession lately you better go. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I go, V8 moment, and I said, oh, I better go. One of the best confessions ever. Because it, it, it was like, it was like, I weighed like 900 pounds, mm -hmm. and I went down to my 250 pounds. No, I like, know, yeah. Wow. You you know, I, I, that, it brings to mind Eric Wardrum. I love this guy. He's the, the head of, he started the, Cal, Cal, um, the Catholic Motorcycle Ministries. A motorcycle club it's not a club it's a ministry uh, and he was in he was in jail he was in prison and this priest came in and said uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm here to hear confessions if anybody wants to have go, go to confession and he was hearing confessions I think going from from jail to jail 
and he was about to leave and finally Eric yelled out, Father, Father, I, 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 one more, I, wa I want to go to confession. And when the priest came over, he said, I don't even know how to do this anymore. So maybe a lot of you might have been like that, might have been like Pat, or are like that right now. You, you, you don't even know how to go to confession anymore. He just said, help me, help me to do it. And the priest led him through the prayers. And then he said, now, son, what, what are your sins? And he said, every one of the Ten Commandments. Every one of them. And uh, he said, I, I'm, I'm in here for murder. And, uh, and the priest said, well, you know, uh, Paul was involved in someone's death, you know. Uh, Moses, David, um, you, know, you know, God can forgive you. And, uh, and wants to forgive you. And, uh, and, you know, we have to tell our men that are listening, it's a come-as-you-are party. You, you need a good scrub, and that's what confession is. So tell us what happened then at, at, at the confessional. What, what, what happened? At well, it, it, was, it was just, you know, I don't even really remember. All I know is that I felt so wonderful, so, so close to God at that time. Mm. And, and then... I became a ball of fire because I was never very <laughs> active spiritually in my yeah. faith. I mean, I wasn't wasn't someone that volunteered or did stuff. I, I so my my priest at the time, Father Flores, he said one day, "You're so full of the Holy Spirit. I don't know what I can do to contain you." But yeah. I tell you what, he let he he encouraged me to do just about everything. You're a and, combination and, and of so Peter. He, you're a combination of Peter and John the Baptist. We're talking. We're talking with Pat King. Uh, we'll call, well, I don't know whether whether we call him John or Peter, but uh, he he has show his man cave. It's on the Salt Light Radio Station in Boise, Idaho. When we get back, we'll get to hear more about what 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 has happened since he came, returned to the faith. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EW10 TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different Tally Awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. My newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, has hit the top five in Christian books for a good reason. It's because men are searching for traction and a trail guide to live out the unique calling and the gifts that they were born with, that each man individually is factory loaded with by God. Paul said, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, do all things in love. Finally, here is a book that talks with men the way men talk with each other. Just plain old straight shoot. By the way, Mama Bears, this is your chance to get this message to your men. Go to schoolofmanliness.com or anywhere books are sold. 12 Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm going to show for those people who watch us on YouTube and some of the other video apps or subscribe to our newsletter. There's the new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Should it, it could have been based basically on our guest, Pat King's life. So you go to confession, and isn't it true? It's like I know after, after um, 
skydiving, I always think of confession of skydiving. You're so apprehensive to go into that confessional. And then, but when you leave. Oh, when I you hated jump, it. Yeah, once I you hated jump, the idea of going. But once you jump out of that plane, there's this feeling of freedom. And then your canopy opens and there's a feeling of peace. And then you land and you feel like you could conquer the world. So what, you, what would you say to people who have not been to, um, to confession in a while? Well, um, spend time thinking about your, your thoughts and sins and, and just jump in. Don't be afraid to jump in. It's like getting on the bull for the first time. Oh, that looks mean and tough. Now, trust me, I've never been on a bull to ride mm -hmm. because they're mean and tough. And, and I, I, I don't bounce very well. So I played rugby. That was tough enough. Um, but it, it's like the first time you do anything for the first time all over again. It's scary. It's tough. You, you cringe. You don't know if, if it's going to come back to you or whatever. But, it, it, but once you do it, there's a difference between night and day it's like it's like the whole earth opens up to you and things look anew they look like the painting you've looked mm -hmm, at many many mm -hmm. times but now you see it a totally different way so all, many uh, you know so many men deal with shame because of pornography things like that or oh. they've let down their families or or so many other things uh and the way i know so many men battle uh, uh habitual sin is when they fall they go to confession and uh, I was talking with someone the other day. It, it, some, at one point, he was going to confession every day, but then he, but then with the help of that, that those sacramental graces, not only did he win that victory, but the shame that he felt was li was being lifted and giving him a fresh heart, giving him a fresh start. There's a certain shame that our soul feels when we haven't lived up to the virtue that God's calling us to. And the confessional, when he says, "I, I absolve you," it, there's just a, you just feel like your soul's fresh and new again. You know, it's it's right. important for you men out there. It's a manly thing to do to go to confession. Well, and and when I told the priest after several visits, I said, you know, I, I seem to be confessing the same thing over and over mm. again. He says, well, at least you only have the one. Yeah. You know, and he said, let's let's work on the one. And and mm. thank goodness you you you're not doing other things. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And you know, it's it's oh, like well, that's mm -hmm. that's a good I a good thought. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a good way to look at it. All these other sins I could be doing, but I'm not. You right. Know? And, but you talked about one other thing when we first started the show. So, <clears throat> But it's not you overcoming them. It's, it's grit and grace. It's the grace of the sacraments and then your own grittiness. But then you said there's a sin of, <clears throat> that we might commit. But what about the things we don't do? You brought that up at the very beginning. What, what, are, what, are, things, yeah. what things are men not doing that, you, that they need to be doing? Well, uh, one of the things that really got me fired up into doing the radio show and man cave and evangelization and all this other stuff came from the very beginning of the mass. So what really sets the tone of the mass is the penitential act, the, the confidia. I think that's the right term for that prayer, mm -hmm. but it's the I confess. Okay, you're openly confessing your sins. And one day I was on pilgrimage uh, to, with Father Leo Padalinga in, in Italy and we were we were offered opportunities in, in St. Peter's Basilica to go to confession, right? Priests from all over the world are hearing confessions all the time there. So I look for one that speaks English and we'd we'd had mass earlier in the day and what struck me was the part where it says, and I'll read it here, um, I confess to Almighty God, to you and my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, okay? In what I have done and in what I have failed to do. And that really struck struck me as, wow, okay, I've done some bad things, but I've probably done far more things that I haven't done that mm. I should be doing. Mm. You know, I wasn't, I didn't want to be a Knight of Columbus. I didn't want to volunteer for St. Vincent de Paul. I didn't want to lead the fish fries on, at the Lenten fish fries. I didn't want to do all that. So I didn't want to teach confirmation because I felt unworthy to even oh, do you're, that. Oh, you're you're so needed in confirmation, dude. You got such oh. an evangelistic fervor. You know, it's so cool. Well, but that's that's that sin that 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 confession. I confess that failure to do. So when I went to the priest for confession, I said, I realized that I failed to do more things God asked me to do than the actual sins that I commit. Mm hmm. You know mm -hmm. that I'm that I need forgive. I need forgiveness for inaction. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, th that's he, the big he, problem these days. I think it's inaction. That's right. Yeah, people are passive. That is right. And so when I asked for absolute, when I got absolution, he said, "Now go and do what God asked you to do." 
Mm-hmm. You know, in his broken Polish language. But I mean, that's the way I took it was go and do more. Mm-hmm. And so it's not like I volunteer for every single thing that comes up. But mm-hmm. when I when there's a someone that needs to fill the void and I know I'm capable. So I do it. I was called to be part of the um, Knight's new initiative of forming men's groups. That's so cool, you know? man, what they're up to. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. And it's called CORE. You know, I'm self-employed. I work all the time. I, I got this going. I got that. I didn't want to do core, another thing. But I was asked to step up, and I said, okay, I'll be a team leader. I'll be on the team, but I, I don't want to be in charge. Well, through things happening, I end up becoming the director of evangelism. That last man agency. standing. <laughs> yeah, that, and I'm the only one right now doing it. So it, But it's been so fulfill, fulfilling because... I go to these different dioceses, these and not dioceses, different uh, councils throughout the state of Idaho. And Idaho is a big state. I was telling my oh, friend yeah, Dave Horton that yeah. you, know, you you start out southern Idaho, you drive to northern Idaho, it's a twelve hour drive. Yeah, that's right. Well, because it hits Canada, that little skinny part up there. Well, okay. Yeah. So now here's here's the thing too, though. People are confused. Why confession? When you go to confession, you're confessing to Jesus. The, the priest is in persona Christi. He's in the person of Jesus Christ. But you said at the beginning when you're at Mass, you say, I confess to you and, and to you, my brothers and sisters. There's three points of reconciliation that have to happen when you've sinned. Right. You need to confess to God and be forgiven. You need to confess to the body of Christ because even if you haven't you know, harmed, a, you need to go, confess to the person that you wronged if you wrong someone. But when you when you sin, it harms the whole body of Christ. It's a wound to the whole body, and so you need to let, you need to say to your brother and sister, "I'm sorry," that you know, and, and and forgive me. But then you need to do the same thing with yourself. That inner fracturing of your soul when you when your God's Spirit within you says do this and you don't, or He says do this and said you do that. Um, that um, so the healing takes place at three levels. It integrates your your spirit, soul, and body. You you feel more, you feel reconnected to the body of Christ, the church, and then you, and then you can look in the Father's eyes and not be ashamed. So, Bear, let's go a little deeper on that, a deeper, deeper venture, deeper down okay. where where your anchor is. Also, you have to make amends for the things you fail to do, mm-hmm. because when you fail to act in someone's needs, someone's benefit, someone who needs help, someone needs to be taught something. When you fail to act, and you're capable of doing it. You also hurt the body of Christ, the mm-hmm. whole community, for failing to act because mm-hmm. that person doesn't get your wisdom, your knowledge, your experience. It doesn't get your participation. Maybe there's no one to do it, and so they can't take go to confirmation, or maybe they don't they don't see you wearing a sacramental. You now, I love wearing this. I would never have worn this before as a non-Catholic or even a young Catholic. But now I, I wear this because it's a constant reminder of who I came back for. Mm-hmm. And so when we fail to act, we're hurting the body just the same as if we did something horrific or bad. Because so, someone doesn't benefit. So what would you say to someone that's been living on the fringes, maybe drifted away from the church, or maybe drifted away from God? What would you say right now um, to that, that person, that man or that woman? in the next minute before we well, have I to would, go. I would tell him, not only does Jesus want you back, but so does Sarah down the street. So mm-hmm. does little Billy, who needs someone to mentor him into the way of Christ. Someone who's who truly believes. Now, if you don't believe, you know, you got to get your belief up. But if you're someone who believes in Christ, if you someone who is practicing your faith, then little Tommy down the road needs that guidance. I'll tell you something I did I'm not doing this to boast, but after I was watching this for months, I've been watching this man bring his three children, young children, in. And one is a, a toddler he has to hold most of the time. By himself with his three kids, every Sunday to Mass, they sit right up at front. Now, I carry these blessed, miraculous medals uh, in my, in my, along with my rosary. And I finally had the courage to act on the failure to do. I thought, I need to go tell him how much I appreciate his fatherhood. And his leadership, his uh, kids. They, so young, to him. young fathers need to hear that a lot from us. That's yeah. right. So I, I walked up after Mass yesterday, and I pulled out three miraculous medals. And they're blessed by our bishop. And I said, I want to tell you how much. And I'm choking up as I'm saying this. 
I want to tell you how much I appreciate your fatherhood, your leadership to your children. They're well behaved. They 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 kneel when they're supposed to. Their hands are folded, like this. And you're a good leader, and I appreciate that because that's the future of our country, our future of our world. Mm -hmm. And so I gave him. I said, "Do you mind if I give your children one of these?" And he said, "No." The young lady says, "Our dad teaches us to obey." And I said, "You're doing a fantastic job." Mm -hmm. And I, I I I believe he was a little choked up. And said, I thank you for that. We need and to you know do that. Mm -hmm. We need to do more of that. Uh, you know, I, I, I've, I, Cindy knows this when we're out and about. A lot of Waikiki, there's a lot of families. I'll always make a point to smile at the children. And then I'll, when I do have the chance, I'll say, especially to the father, I'm, 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 proud, I'm so proud of you. Because a lot of them haven't had a, a man ever say that to them. You know, yeah. they haven't had the dad or the uncle that would say that here in Hawaii. Um, Cindy knows we have Father Joseph uh, Paddock from Bozeman here staying with us right now. And as we walk down the street, everyone's so friendly here. But people are calling out to me, hey, uncle, hey, uncle, hey, uncle, you know. Um, and in Hawaii, there's that tradition of uncling the younger kids, loving on them, challenging them, rebuking them when they need to be rebuked. But we need to especially affirm our, our, our young fathers. Pat, we're, we're out of time. Where, where can people find you? Well, uh, if you, you too, you can go to Boise, Salt and Light Radio Boise at their YouTube channel. You'll find some of my past episodes of Man Cave. Uh, we lost the producer of that show, so we're, we're trying to re-engage that. David's learning how to do that, that part of it again so we can start doing my, my, my podcast. And, uh, but Salt and Light Radio Boise, they have a, they have a app. Salt and Light Radio also is an app. They can listen to my radio show every Monday, every Wednesday morning at 7:20 uh, live. David and I are doing that 14 and a half minute segment every Wednesday morning at Salt Light Radio Boise. And, and thank, uh, thank you, Pat King, for 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 uh, go, for being with us. We got to we got to we got to run. Uh, we, my, my wife always tells me to bless everybody with the Hawaiian sign of the cross. May the breath of the Holy Spirit alo aloha you. Akemakua kekeki ameke ohana hemalele. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Till next week, Amen. aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wasting Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wasting Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.